My name is Maddie McKenzie. I'm an enrollment advisor at Acadia. I worked in the Toronto area this year, so not sure if I met with any of you, but if I did, hello again, and if I didn't, uh, nice to meet you. I am a proud alumna of Acadia University. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science back in 2016. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy to see you all here. My name is Dr. Matt Lukman, and I'm the department head and also a professor in the department. And I'll be taking you through a lot of these slides today. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Victoria. Most people call me Tori. Um, I'm a current student at Acadia. I just finished my fourth year, um, and I'm a double major in chemistry and nutrition. So I'll be back for a fifth year uh, to finish up some prereqs and then I'll be on to the next chapter. I'm happy to be here and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hi everyone, I'm Jenna. I graduated from Acadia last spring 2019 um, with honors in chemistry. Um, I took a year off this year to travel and such uh, until COVID happened. Um, and I'm going to dental school in the fall and also happy to be here. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just start out uh, by letting you know who we have working uh, in our department, because these are the faces that um, if you are coming to our department that you'll be interacting with most. Um, so there's myself, there's uh, Dr. Amitab Jha, Dr. Vlad Zemlini, Dr. Nicoletta Farron, uh, Dr. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Gollin, Miss. Kelly Stevens and Dr. Anthony Tong. And we have more on the next page as well. Um, Ms. Ashley Parsons, Dr. Bobby Ellis, Dr. Elena Zamlini, Dr. Jeffrey Banks, Ms. Avril Bird, who's our admin assistant, Dr. John Marimbo, and Ms. Kathy Marimbo. So we have uh, a very, um, we have a, a nice big staff. We have expertise in all areas of chemistry. Uh, our faculty are generally all research active so they have research projects going on in all of these areas as well so i feel like we have a, a good sized department and we can cover quite a bit of uh air, quite broadly we can cover uh, all areas of chemistry so on this slide i kind of uh, i made up a diagram here just to kind of give you an overview of what our different programs that we have available in chemistry look like and so what i have here is these little uh blocks every block is one course and a full degree is typically 40 courses and so what you can see there is we have uh, bsc honors as our most intensive program in chemistry and it has roughly half of the courses that you'll be taking will be chemistry courses plus you see there's four math courses two physics and that leaves the remaining courses available for electives Six of those electives have to be outside the Faculty of Science, and then the others can be basically anything. Um, this is probably our, I don't want to say toughest, uh, most intensive program for sure. And this is probably the best option for people who are interested in going on to graduate school or research careers in chemistry or um, a variety of things as well. Uh, the next program that you see is our BSE major in chemistry. And you can see that this program has slightly less emphasis in chemistry. Uh, math and physics is roughly the same. And there, this leaves a little bit more room for electives. So the BSE major in chemistry uh, might be a better option for somebody who has maybe um, a lot of prereqs that they need to get for some professional school afterwards, maybe uh, a health profession, for example or maybe it's education and you're trying to get a second subject, uh, trying to get enough to have a teachable, that would be a very good option. You can see the third option here is the BSE double major. And you can actually have this with chemistry as your first major, which is the third line, or chemistry as your second major, which is the fourth line. Uh, for the first major, you end up taking 13 chemistry courses out of your 40 for your full degree. And then you have to take 10 courses for subject number two. There's a smaller math requirement and a little bit of physics and then a, a decent amount of room available for electives. Or you can have something similar where you basically swap those where chemistry you take 10 courses, 
Subject two, you take around 13 courses, two maths, and then a whole bunch of electives as well. So our double majors, uh, for most of our students, subject number two is biology. So it's very popular to have a, a double major degree with chemistry and biology, but that is certainly not the only possibility. Basically any other discipline in science or arts can be blended with chemistry to make a double major degree. So regardless of which of these uh, degree options you may be interested in, your first year is going to be more or less the same no matter what. Usually students all take the first same set of courses in first year and then branch off into those different programs after year two. So in the fall, uh, you can see you'll be taking one course in chemistry, one course in math, one course in physics, and then two spaces for electives. And normally what I recommend is that one of those electives be a science elective. For example, it could be psychology, it could be biology, it could be computer science, whatever you're thinking, whatever your interests are. And the second one I usually recommend uh, for it to be outside of science, maybe an arts course like a language or English or history or something like that. And then the second semester, which is in the winter, you take another five courses, which is basically the second half of intro chem, which is 1123, second half of math, second half of physics, and then two electives again in your schedule. We have co-op options as well. And so our co-op program at Acadia is, um, is very similar regardless of what discipline or what degree you're taking. Uh, the co-op program is sort of an additional piece that's added on to your ordinary degree. It involves three paid work terms and the average in chemistry is around $10,000 per four month work term. Co-op program accepts applications starting near the beginning of your second year. So this is not something you should be thinking about during your first year. And then when second year comes along, you'll start to see the uh, advertisements. And that was when you would apply to the co-op program. In addition to these paid work terms, which is obviously a big financial benefit, um, you receive specialized coaching to help you nail interviews how to find jobs that are relevant to your discipline, how to write good resumes and cover letters to make you um, uh, competitive for these positions as well. And any of our chemistry degree options can be blended with the co-op program and it's available to anybody. So I have just a few pictures here. These are two of our co-op students who uh, recently completed work terms uh, in the summer of 2019. So this was last summer, Jenny and Daniel. Outside of co-op, we have a lot of other employment opportunities as well. And uh, one thing that we really pride ourselves on at Acadia is involving undergraduates in research projects. And all of our faculty have projects that are on the go. And it's almost all involving undergraduates who are in the lab collecting results, analyzing the data, and often our students end up being able to travel to conferences and that's Molly on the bottom there who's presenting her research in the form of a poster. Um, often our students end up getting published as well so it's great to see your name in, uh, in print and it's also a fantastic thing to be able to have on a resume or a CV for potential employers to see that you're involved in that. Um, this is sort of an uncommon thing too. It's, it's pretty rare that undergraduates get the opportunity to participate in original research at most universities. Uh, but at Acadia, because we're a much smaller, more intensive university where we focus much more on undergraduates, uh, there's much more opportunity for undergraduates for this sort of thing. The research, by the way, can be done as just summer employment where you can get paid to spend your summer working in a research lab. You can do it for course credit as well, and you can do it for co-op, and uh, there's a variety of ways to get involved in research, and it's a, a great, great idea. These are just a few of the research areas that we have on the go right now. Dr. Ja, who was on the first slide, is a medicinal chemist, and he's working to develop, uh, design, and, and create new anti-cancer drugs. He's working with a pharmaceutical company to, to do this and have them tested. 
Uh, Dr. John Marimbo and Dr. Anthony Tong are both environmental analytical chemists, so they are making measurements of different substances that can be found in the environment and tracking them over time to see if they're uh, at safe levels and see if the levels are rising or dropping. Uh, an example might be heavy metals like mercury. I know Dr. Tong is looking at um, pharmaceutical compounds that end up in wastewater streams. So this is a huge branch of chemistry as well, so applying it to environmental problems. Uh, we have Dr. Nicoletta Ferraone, who's a, uh, our new biochemist. She, was, this is, she just completed her first year here at Acadia, and she's got a very interesting research program using natural plant extracts to deter pests, in particular ticks. And she's paired up with a company called Atlantic and are making new preparations that are trying to become more and more, um, uh, more and more effective at repelling ticks which we know are increasing in this area and many other areas as well. Dr. Zamlini is working in the area of uh, corrosion control, so it's applying our understanding of uh, oxidation reduction chemistry or redox chemistry to protect metals from rusting, and this would have applications in, for example, the design of ships or any other metal object that might be certainly in contact with water. We have uh, a new lab uh, associated with our department called the A-Lab, which is the Acadia Lab for Agri-Food and Beverage. And this has about two million dollars of new equipment in it, which is used for analyzing uh, chemicals and compounds that are of importance in foods and wines. And so there's opportunities to get involved with this research well as well, which is very exciting. And we have research going on as well. Dr. Bobby Ellis in catalysis, he's designing new catalysts to capture carbon dioxide and store it, which is uh, being uh, developed as a potential solution for, um, for climate, climate change. So our facilities, uh, we are basically entirely housed in LEF. If you're familiar at all with the Acadia campus is uh, closest to Main Street. It's where we're right on Main Street across the street from the gym. This building underwent a complete renovation where basically the entire building was gutted and rebuilt from the inside out. And this was just completed in, in uh, 2019. And so it's led to complete renovations of all of our labs and teaching spaces and our classrooms as well. There's new lounge areas and places for people to study and hang out. And you can see a couple of images here of some of the new hardware that's put in place. And here's a little video just showing one of our labs. This is our, our biochem lab. It's a, it's a little bit uh, choppy, but I think you can get the idea. So this is a lab that we use for biochemistry and inorganic chemistry. So it kind of serves dual purposes. And a lab of this size would house probably about 20 to 25 students max at one point in time. So our labs are large and spacious, and there's lots of room for people to spread out. Uh, we have lots of brand new fume hoods, which are those uh, large sort of glassed off things that you see where essentially all of the experiments that might create anything that would smell bad end up in. And this is for safety. And this is because it's what you would expect to have in a professional environment if you go out and work in chemical industry. All right, and, and maybe Tori and Jenna can speak more to this than I can, but we do have an active chem club, and the chem club does all sorts of things. They do fundraising, uh, and that money goes for to help people travel to conferences. Uh, they host banquets. They organize many other social events. That's a picture on the left there from our most recent banquet this past, uh, this winter, actually, just before the COVID restrictions came out. Um, you can see they're doing some uh, lab coat tie dyeing there on the right as well. They had movie nights this year, trivia, and all kinds of other things as well. Um, Tori and Jenna, was there anything you wanted to pop in and maybe comment about Chem Club, since you guys are certainly more involved in that than I've been? Um, I mean, I think you kind of <laughs> nailed it with all the things that we get to do, but it's definitely like a good community. Um, chemistry in general it tends to be one of the smaller um, faculties for science, um, and so everyone's really close, and Chem Club is just another way that we get to do that. Typically, um, anyone who wants to be involved gets to be, and we meet 
probably bi-weekly. Um, and yeah, there's usually lots of fun events and things like that that we get to do together. It also gives you a chance to get, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. <laughs> it also gives you a chance to kind of get involved in a leadership aspect. Um, there's usually four different positions that kind of run the chem club, the president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary, and both Jenna and I have been a part of that. So you kind of get a bigger say in like the events that get planned and stuff like that. So um, it's really good um, for a learning opportunity, for being a leader, and also looks really great on a resume. So definitely something to look into if that's something that interests you. One other thing about Chem Club, actually, before I, I move on, that I'd recommend to you guys if, if when you come, or if you come, would be to get involved and get to know the people who are in the years above you, because you can get all sorts of great, uh, valuable information from those students about courses that will uh, that you'll be taking in the future. So lots of good intel you can get. Okay, so this is just a diagram breaking down careers of our graduates. And, and what I actually did is I went through and I surveyed all of our graduates from the last about 10 years or so. Uh, there was one, there was about 15% that I couldn't get responses from, but of the remaining people that did reply, this is where they, they went. So about a quarter went on to graduate school to, to get a master's or a PhD in chemistry. And they've gone from universities in Canada to US to internationally. So they've gone sort of all over the place. And uh, from what they report, they felt very well prepared to enter these programs, especially those that got involved in research while they were uh, here at Acadia. You can see below that medicine, about 17% of our graduates ended up going to medical school. And um, some of them, got in right away and some of them uh, maybe it took a year or two of doing something else before they applied and went to medical school uh six percent we have dentistry eight percent pharmacy and five percent is other health professions which includes things like uh, nursing we have radiology technicians we have uh, dietitians and collectively the medical or the health fields you see medicine all the way over to the red other health is around 40 percent so that's, that's a huge fraction of our students that end up going from chemistry into some health career, which is very uh, impressive. 17% get jobs directly in chemical industry. So this means they would go and work for some company uh, and they, some of these people are research assistants doing, uh, pharma, doing in industrially relevant research. Some of these people are quality control technicians uh, where they're, say, testing products that are being produced by a company to make sure that they have the right levels of different chemicals or substances in there. 7% uh, go into education. So this is mostly um, teaching. The, the, they'll get a bachelor's of education degree and go become a teacher somewhere. And then you see that other category, which is 15%, is a giant fraction. Well, it's a big fraction, but there's a huge variety of uh, very interesting careers in, that's uh, part of that 15%. Uh, we actually have a, a, a lot of our graduates, well, maybe not a lot, but uh, a significant number end up working in the financial sector, working as bankers and things like this. And that's because our program actually teaches a lot of skills that are very transferable, a lot of uh, numeracy skills, a lot of sort of math, problem solving type skills that even if you don't go work as a chemist or work directly with chemistry, the skills that you would get in the program can be transferred to many, many other fields. All right, so this is just a picture of our, our recent grads, and, and this gives you uh, a bit of a picture of typical size of our program. That's one feature we think is, is good. Uh, each year we have, I'd say roughly 20 students that are in one of those chemistry programs and uh, they get to know each other quite well and form a nice tight-knit group and also it allows for very close interaction if you saw on the opening slides we have about 14 faculty and staff department and not too many more than that graduates for each year so that means uh, your props will get to know you it's easy to get time to interact with them to go to their offices get help one-on-one -on -one and uh, hopefully work in their labs as well. 
All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Lukeman. If you um, if you want to ask Jenna and Victoria any questions also during this during this time, um, feel free to do so. But I just have a few questions for for Jenna and Victoria. Um, a few common questions that maybe incoming students might want to know about. So for for both of you, I'm not sure what order you want to go in, but um, the first question there, were you involved in a club or society at Acadia? Maybe I know you touched on Chem Club, and if you want to talk about that a bit more, do so. But uh, were there any others? If so, what was this experience like for you? And what advice would you give incoming students interested in these opportunities? Uh, Jenna, do you want to go first? Um, sure. Um, so like we said, we were both involved in the Chem Club, which we highly recommend getting involved with. Um, I was also involved with Acadia Smile program. If you guys don't know about that, it's um, a wonderful program that works with um, youth and adults in the Valley community um, who have different disabilities and you get to work on um, different goals with them. Um, it's really fun. A um, lot of Acadia students are a part of that. Um, what else? Um, we were both RAs. That's not really a club. Um, I was part of the uh, personal support line, which was uh, great. Uh, I was a TA, also not a club, but um, yeah, I'll let Tori go over now. <laughs> Um, I guess probably the biggest thing that I've done at Acadia outside of academics is my involvement with club sports. So Acadia has a figure skating team, which we're the only one in the Atlantic provinces. Um, and uh, I was actually, I've been the president of that for the last two years, but I've been on the team the last four. And I found that having that um, kind of community outside of academics it was really helpful for me. Um, one, as like stress relief to go and be on the ice with a group of 12 to 16 other girls and just hang out or um, also to have people to go to with problems and things like that. Um, it was a really, really great experience for me. And then, like Jenna said, I also uh, TA'd. I was an RA and chem club. So um, kind awesome. of a, great. Kind of things to get involved with. Um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on two things you two mentioned there. The SMILE program, for sure. For those on the line that might not know what SMILE is, it, it does stand for Sensory Motor Instructional Leadership Experience. And it's definitely our biggest volunteer opportunity on campus. Students from all different uh, programs participate in, participate in it. And as an alumni myself, um, I graduated four years ago from Acadia and I still have friends uh, around my age that one of the sole reasons they come back to visit Nova Scotia is to visit their smile buddy. So, um, and I'm sure Victoria and Jenna kind of know what that's, what that's like at Acadia, uh, but something to definitely look into. Um, once we're able to all be on on campus together, whenever that might be. Um, and secondly, there uh, with regards to the club sports, there are club sports and varsity sports are are competitive. Typically, you you compete, um, but there are also intramural sports. So for anybody who maybe doesn't want as competitive as, as an experience as club or varsity, there's intramurals, just a great way to make friends, stay in shape, that kind of thing. So. Uh, second question there, maybe we'll let Victoria go first this time. Uh, what is living in Wolfville like? If you had to pick a favorite place to hang out in town, where would it be? So I know you two are both uh, proud Nova Scotians, but uh, we do have a few people on the line too from who aren't Maritimers. So if you had any advice for them as well. Yeah, um, I love Wolfville. I love it so much. Um, I would even venture to say that I, it's my favorite place in Nova Scotia. Um, I live here now, so um, I really enjoy it. My favorite places in town, um, I'd probably say Just Us, the coffee shop. Um, there's always uh, events and things going on there, um, like uh, people performing music, and there's also a theater there, um, and they have great coffee, so <laughs> that's always a plus. Um, so I go there to study most of the time. Um, and then also another favorite on the weekends is the Axe, the Acadia Bar. Um, it's always fun there. They have events um, usually on Friday nights. And um, it's also a way to support clubs and societies and things because it's often um, fundraising. So a couple of great spots. Yeah, um, Wolfville's incredible. Um, small little community. I'm from Halifax. so. Um, Nova Scotia, but it's a city. And so um, moving to Nova Scotia, it's a little town. Everyone knows each other. All the shops are really supportive of the students. And um, yeah, it's a real community feel there. 
Um, and it's very beautiful, beautiful place. The valley is incredible. Um, there's a lot of um, spots nearby. If you have a car, you can get a friend with a car. Um, beautiful scenic areas nearby. Uh, there's apple picking and there's um, Cape Split is a hike nearby that's really beautiful. Um, and then we'll feel itself hanging out in town. Um, just us is great. Like Tori said, there's also the dikes um, nearby where you can walk along the water, see the ocean. It's really beautiful. Um, yeah, lots of little coffee shops and stores. It's cute. Yeah. And uh, just speaking from my own experience, I'm originally from Ontario and uh, from from a city in Ontario. So when I went out to Wolfville, I was a little bit skeptical about the size of the town. Uh, you know, everybody kept saying, oh, the city, the city. And I was like, which which city? But, you know, people always call Halifax a city because it's the only large city in Nova Scotia. But what I can say from personal experience, I still live in Wolfville myself. They haven't been able to get rid of me since I since I showed up in 2012. Uh, very welcoming place, although it is small. You know, it's 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 very welcoming. There's a diverse population of people. We have we have quite a few international students, people from all different walks of life. So there's always something going on. You're never going to be bored. Um, and the other thing, too, to mention for anybody that loves the outdoors, I, I went out to university. I didn't have a vehicle. And although, you know, there are some hikes that are a short drive away, there's a ton of stuff locally that you don't need a car for. You know, I remember, again, being out of province or for anybody that's international on the line, just to go down and watch the tides you know, change or the tides at different levels is absolutely incredible if you're not used to that. Um, you know, we're right on the Bay of Fundy, highest tides in the world. So something to definitely go check out. But we have, you know, a ton of hiking trails, things like that right in Wolfville. So lots of places to get fresh air too. And and as Jenna and Victoria said, it is, you know, we're, we're all biased, I'm sure, but arguably one of the most beautiful places um, in the province for sure. And, and maybe even the country. So um, okay, back to you, Jenna. So you both lived in residence and were then both employed as residence assistants. Could you speak to both? What advice would you give incoming first years looking to RA in subsequent years? And if you two also want to touch on maybe your TA, which stands for teaching assistant, for those who don't know, if you want to touch on uh, your TA experience, that'd be great as well. Yeah, I mean, um, I know we don't know exactly what uh, the fall might look like at this point, um, but if at some point you have the opportunity to live in residence, I highly recommend it. Um, it was a great way to meet people. Um, I came to Acadia and didn't know anyone else who was going to the school and immediately within the first week found my best friends that I, I'm still friends with now. Um, and it's just, it, it's a great community and there's a lot of different um, kind of personalities to the residences um, so you can definitely find your fit and I loved being a residence assistant also recommend that to anyone who's interested um, it in itself is a great community I have a lot of friends that um, I met through being an RA and then um, it's just an like a great opportunity to get to um, give back to incoming students it's always really exciting um, getting involved with all the first years who are at, at university for the first time and everything. Um, as for advice, you know, I think um, one of the hardest things to like first year is just the adjustment to everything, the adjustment to university life, if it's your first time living away from home, all of that. Um, so I guess just trying not to um, stress too much about it all and and take it all in and get involved with as many things as you can um, and if you're looking um, to RA I would just recommend in your first year really um, getting involved with as many things as you can talking to the RAs they love to talk about it so ask them um, about their experience and um, and yeah just um, I guess just get involved with everyone and meet people and yeah. <laughs> what about you, Victoria? Uh, honestly, I think Jenna really covered everything. Um, I love residence. I lived there um, for all four years. Um, I won't be living there next year, um, but I had a great experience. I have nothing but good things to say about Acadia residence life. Um, the people are incredible. 
Uh, they work so hard uh, to make students feel welcome and it's constantly evolving. So whenever a problem is found, um, often it's quickly resolved. Um, um, in terms of like being an RA, um, it's definitely something to think about. I knew that I wanted to be an RA within like the first two weeks of being at Acadia. Um, I love leadership opportunities. And um, I think my favorite part of um, working in residence life is getting to meet all of the new first years, like being that um, first face that they see when they walk in the door. Um, it's just, it's a really special opportunity that you're given as a student leader. Um, and if you're looking, if that's something that you decide that you do want to do, my biggest uh, piece of advice is to get to know your RAs. Talk to them about their experience, what it's like um, being an RA. Um, you really can never be too prepared for the job. You never know what it's going to throw at you, and that's one of the best parts about it. So definitely get um, get to know um, the people around you that are working to help you. Awesome, yeah. And it is, it is a paid position. Um, the RAs are compensated for it, so a little little part-time job opportunity and then also if one of you just wants to touch on uh being a ta and and if if you liked that what you liked about it maybe what you didn't um just just be honest with with our group here yeah um i can touch on that uh, if you like um i've been a ta both for marking and for lab so the roles are a bit different um oh and also for the chemistry help center so I'll kind of talk about each, I guess. So for labs, basically what you do is um, you, well, it's kind of in the name, you assist um, the students as like a student teacher. Uh, so if they have questions about the lab, then um, you can answer them. Uh, for marking, that's again, kind of uh, self-explanatory. You get sent home with work from um, students and you're the one that marks it and gives it back to the profs. And then um, for the chemistry help center, uh, that one's a little different. So um, is mostly for first year students. So you um, help them with their assignments every week. It happens um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings. Um, and that's a really great place to be both as a TA and as a student. Um, you can get lots of help and uh, I definitely encourage you to stop in there if um, you get the chance. Right on. Yeah, back, back in my first year, I definitely should have paid rent to the chemistry help center I was there. <laughs> not chemistry is not my strong suit but uh, but that's okay um so and just to, to touch one more time on that ta thing i've had friends that were tas in the past and although it is you know a leadership experience a job opportunity it's also a bit of a learning experience if i'm not mistaken right even though you, you kind of have taken the class already or the lab already just being able to interact with those students mark mark the papers that sort of thing maybe maybe help out with the chem help center it, it also helps you with your academics as well am i am i right there oh yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely i uh i think i would have forgotten a lot more of the uh things we learn in first year the basics if uh if i didn't have to go over them so much um helping up the first years especially like tori said in the in the chem um help center um and i also just want to touch on like with the ta it's a very i think unique opportunity at acadia because at bigger schools, you know, typically it's the graduate students that would be the TAs and there'd be less opportunities um, for undergraduate students to get to be a TA versus at Acadia, nearly all the TAs would be undergraduate students. So it's a great opportunity that you get at Acadia. Yeah, and you, another, can do it second. you can like you could do it like once you've completed the course, you can TA at the next time it's. Yeah, offered. I started TAing in second year, so. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome opportunities throughout throughout your years. Um, all right. So uh, back to Victoria first. If you could go back to first year, would you have done anything differently? If so, what advice can you give our future students on the line? Uh, that's a more tricky question. Um, I really loved my first year experience. Um, I loved Welcome Week. I loved meeting new friends. I loved my courses. Um, I think. The one thing I probably would have done differently is um, spent more time focusing on how to study. Um, the way you study in high school just doesn't help. <laughs> you really need to sit down and figure it out for yourself. Everybody's different um, and it takes a while. It takes time. It took me almost till my second year to kind of figure out what works for me. Um, and so that's definitely something that I, if I could do it again, I would have spent more time on. But everybody gets there eventually. So don't stress yourself out too much about it. Um, and the next line is, oh, advice. So I guess that's my advice is uh, study habits. Figure those out uh, early and uh, just do your best. 
Yeah, um, and to add to that, I guess I would, um, I think if I could do anything differently and then also my advice, like, I think university when you get there, sometimes it can be very intimidating. Um, so like Tori said, like, for example, with the RAs, like, don't be afraid to talk to the RAs um, if we're on campus, that is. Um, don't be afraid to go with them for anything. I thought the RAs were like the police um, in my first year, but they're really not. They're there to help you and everything. And on the same note, like I had friends who like would be so intimidating, would never email their prof or would never go talk to them. But that is such a huge advantage to Acadia having like this small um, community, small class sizes, is that you can really have the opportunity to get to know your prof. Um, and you can like seriously, like go talk to them after class or office hours, email them. They're there to help you like all of them are great and just want to see you succeed so i would say like right off the bat don't be afraid um to go to them if you need anything um and also i think we already touched on this but just to get involved with things um and to like if you're interested in something and you know someone involved like everyone loves to talk about <laughs> the things that they're involved with and are super encouraging and like wanting everyone else to get involved too um, so don't be afraid to reach out to people who are involved in something that you're interested in. For sure. Um, great answers there too. And just, just to touch on the study habits again, I want to kind of echo what Victoria said, you know, first year is a transition. It's a transition from high school. Um, you know, we have a lot of really amazing students coming in from high school and and it might be an easy, breezy transition, and for others, maybe not. So, again, just be kind to yourself. Be patient. You will figure it out, like like Victoria said, with studying. So um, just give yourself some time. You know, whether you find you like studying in a quiet area more by yourself or in a group, there's going to be opportunities for that. And we do have sessions, usually in Welcome Week, um, on how to study effectively. This year, we're not exactly sure how Welcome Week's going to look, but whether it's, you know, a hybrid or or partially on campus or if it's virtual we will be covering those types of things so i encourage you to to follow along and, and attend those events for sure and last but not least what is your favorite place to study whether you know it can be on campus it can be off campus in town maybe one of each if you prefer so uh jenna what you you can go first on this one um, they kind of changed throughout the years, but I think overall, um, my favorite place to study on campus would have been um, the KCIC, which is the Casey Irving Center. Um, if you haven't seen pictures of it yet or anything, it is the most stunning building on campus for sure. Um, yeah, beautiful glass windows and fire um, in the winter that's going, so that's really nice. And then off campus, Probably just us, like uh, Tori said earlier. Um, it's a cute little coffee shop, um, great coffee. And uh, in the summer months, if you're ever there for research or anything like that, they'll open up, they have like a garage door um, as a window in front and that gets opened up and it's a really nice space. Um, for me, I'm kind of a weird case. I really like studying by myself. So usually I'll just study at home in my room. I would study in my room in res all the time, um, often with the door open so I could chat with people if they came by. But I definitely like just studying by myself. Um, if I were going to leave my residence room, uh, usually I would go to the library, um, especially in my first and second year. I spent a lot of time in the library. Um, and also just us, like Jenna said, uh, love just us. I cannot express my love enough to justice. <laughs> yeah, my favorite place to study used to be meal hall, so I could just eat all day and yes. study all day. During <laughs> exams, I would do that. I would just set up shop yeah. in meal hall all day. <laughs> a dangerous study spot. I found that out quickly, but <laughs> still a place you can study. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you both so much. Um, I'm going to ask you to stay on the line for the live Q&A, if you don't mind, if anybody has... Uh, specific questions for both of you or one of you. Victoria and Jenna also uh, mentioned that they're they're happy to share their emails with you folks in the chat box. So if maybe you don't want to ask a question uh, in a group, they're happy to to receive emails from you also if you'd if you'd like to hear from a current student or alumni perspective. So they're going to pop their emails in the chat box there for you. All right. 
So just quickly before we get to the live Q&A, a few future touch points. So again, this webinar is going to be, it is recorded and it will be available to you uh, within 24 to 48 hours at acadiau.ca. So if you want to come back, check anything out, pause it, fast forward, rewind, that will all be available to you. If you do have questions regarding enrollment or admissions, more kind of general um, Acadia information, you can definitely email acadia for you at acadiau.ca or there's a lot of enrollment advisors like myself. Uh, we're typically by region. So um, again, I'm, I'm the Toronto area, but we have people throughout the country and also international enrollment advisors. So if you'd like to book a virtual coffee date with one of us, we're happy to do that through that email as well. And if you do have specific questions regarding chemistry, you can email the general chemistry account or Dr. Lukeman. Um, you can see those addresses there as well. Okay, so we are into the live Q&A session here. So um, if you would prefer to ask your question verbally through your microphone, you can type RH in the chat box for raised hand and I'll call on you in order. Um, or if you prefer to type your question in the chat box, you can do that as well and we'll, we'll kind of go in order there. If you're having any technical difficulties and maybe you can't speak through your microphone or your chat box isn't working, um, you can again email questions to acadia 4 you at acadiau.ca. And don't be shy, we're here to help. Uh, so does anybody have any questions for either myself or Jenna, Victoria or Dr. Lukeman? Give you a few seconds here to type if people are typing. Pretty quiet. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask uh, Matt. I'm going to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Sure. And um, maybe throughout, if anybody has any, I'll just I'll just keep an eye on the chat box there. Okay. Just find where I where I had these. Okay. So, is there a particularly fun lab or experience? Potential learning opportunity in first year. Yeah, so uh, we have lots of actually really cool labs. Uh, our lab instructor Ashley has sort of completely revamped all of our first year labs in the last few years and uh, worked very hard to try to make them very exciting and interesting and colorful and all the rest. So we have uh, one lab I know of where we take different kinds of food and we do calorimetry on the food to determine how many calories are in each of those different types. The students like that one. Uh, there's one where we test different antacids that are commercially available to see which one would be most effective. Um, there's lots of nice colorful ones. There's an interesting copper based lab where it goes through a bunch of different oxidation states and you see nice different colored solutions. Um, yeah, I think the, there's, there's a lot of neat and interesting new labs that uh, we have. Yeah. Awesome. And in those nice, beautiful labs now as well. Exactly. Nice yeah. new space. Oh, and I might add one other, uh, it's not really a lab, but an experience for first year is uh, um, this past year, I had a bunch of my first year chemistry students uh, help do demos for the community. So we went out into the community and we uh, did a bunch of chemistry demos. We made liquid nitrogen ice cream for kids. And uh, that was a kind of a neat experience that our first years got to be involved in this year. Awesome, yeah. The, the the liquid nitrogen ice cream is a is a popular <laughs> yeah. one that people hear about, and maybe maybe the most important question of all: what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Well, I think the best. I'm weird for this. Everyone says I'm weird, but I actually my favorite is vanilla. <laughs> I know that's, that's boring. Some of the, the basics, right? The the yeah. classics. Classics. If ice cream's <laughs> good, if it's vanilla, it'll be really good. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> The the I think the favorite of the kind I make though the liquid nitrogen ice cream it's vanilla ice cream with um, Oreo in it. Oh yes, that seems that does sound to good. Be, yeah, that does sound good. <laughs> um, another question. So how easy is it to access professors um, or perhaps lab instructors in your department? Can you speak to you know how office hours work at Acadia? Are they are they really you know strict? And and maybe Victoria and Jenna, if you want to pop pop on if you have any. Um, you know, stories about this after Dr. Lukeman has his, has his chance to. 
Sure. Yeah. So, so all of our courses have uh, sort of a, a scheduled three hour per week office hour point in time. So that's a three hour period where students can come in that course and talk to the professor. But uh, in my experience, I would say whenever I post those three hours of office time, office hour time, uh, students sometimes come then, but I get most of my office hours are outside of those posted three hours. So, so for most profs, I would say in chemistry, uh, send an email. We're happy to meet with you. We'll make a time if our posted office hours don't work. And I actually spend a lot of hours a week doing office hour type work. Yeah, with students one on one. Jenner, Victoria, do you have any office hour stories or outside of office hours, you know, reaching your profs? I don't know if I have really any stories, but I will say that it is really easy to do. Like all of them make themselves available. Um, and if their office hour times don't work for you, if it conflicts with your class schedule or something, um, they will make time for you. So definitely reach out. Um, one, because it's good for your academics, but two, because they're just nice people. It's nice to be around them and get to know them. And um, all of them want you to succeed. So um, huge, huge recommendation to go and see them. Yeah, similar to what Tori said, I guess, like I said before, like try not to be afraid of the office hours because um, sometimes people can be first off. Um, but yeah, like Tori said, it's a really great opportunity. And um, yeah, I don't think I've ever had an issue with getting a hold of a prof, like at least within 24 hours of needing help. So um, yeah, again, could be office hours, could be email. I think I have a couple cell phone numbers, like, you know, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I agree. Really I, I had um, I had a few late nights in my my degree myself and, you know, panicked kind of before midterms or exams, whatever it might be. And I, I won't name I won't name the institution, but I definitely know what some friends at larger institutions, you know, were shocked when I got an answer the evening of and and when they can only reach their profs by scheduling office hours weeks if not months in advance before a midterm so um it's definitely nice definitely nice to have i've spent many hours many 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 hours <laughs> in office yeah. hours <laughs> me as well again yeah don't be afraid of them they're there they're here to help they're they're there to help you um okay so i know we kind of touched on the chem help center is there free chemistry specific help on campus and maybe more uh, specifically, uh, you know, we do have some people on the line that aren't chemistry majors if they plan to do it as a double major or maybe just electives, I'm not sure. Uh, but is this chemistry help open to all people taking chemistry at Acadia? Yeah, so we have our office hours and actually one thing we do with office hours before we leave them completely is we share office hours. And so what that means is if we have, say, five sections of intro chem, and there's five professors each teaching their own section. Um, each will have a separate three hour period of office hours and you can go to any one of them. So there's 15 hours of office hours available for that for sort of one-on-one -on -one help. On top of that, three evenings a week, we run a chem help center and it's staffed typically by upper year chemistry students. So I don't know, I know Tori, you've been involved. Jenna, I'm not sure if you've TA'd in that, that way as well. Oh yeah, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so that is a, a great way to get basically free tutoring. So you can go three nights a week and it runs three hours each of those evenings. Um, usually it's, I would say it's mostly first year students that are taking advantage of that. Occasionally you get some second year students taking organic chem uh, and probably most of the people taking advantage of that are not chemistry majors, would you say? A lot of uh, yeah. engineering students, a lot of biology students, uh, and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, definitely lots of, of available help if you're uh, needing it to get through. Awesome. Um, what is your favorite part, uh, Dr. Lukeman, about teaching at a small institution or Did living in the community? Oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Just just touching back on like the chemistry. Oh, health sorry, Tori. <laughs> oh, that's OK. Sorry. Um, Another um, resource you can use is always other people in your program. Like uh, upper year students are often willing to help you um, just like one on one um, or other people in your program. I know almost every class I've ever been in, we've had a group chat so that if people have questions that they can ask everyone else in the class if they've had the chance to go to office hours already or something like that. So other students there can also be a huge help. 
Yeah, in the library too, there's a lot. Our, our library at Acadia, the first floor is meant for group studying. There are quiet floors as you go further up the stairs, but it's also group study rooms too. So, you know, like Tori said, there's there's tons of study groups on, on campus, regardless of what program you're in. Um, and the library is very conducive to kind of those study dates. So you don't all have to kind of cram into a residence room or, or something like that, for sure. And there's some stuff that's like not just chemistry tutoring either. Like as a science student, um, English was always a weakness for me. And so during, you know, like intro, um, like your English classes, they have like um, at like there's a writing help center as well that also does free tutoring. And so there's d doesn't just not just chemistry related, but there's definitely free help on campus for a lot of courses. Yeah. yeah. And again, just uh, touching on. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Zuckman. I was just going to say math as well as a math help center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we will touch on all those um, in your welcome week orientation as well. So again, make sure you participate in, in welcome week. Um, and we'll cap it off with this question for Dr. Lukeman. So uh, what again, what is your favorite part about teaching at a small institution or, or kind of living in the community? I think my favorite part is really getting to know my students and it's it's really gratifying to see them go off and be successful and then come back and visit and, and talk about what's new in their lives and, and see them do really well. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, studied at large schools where there's just so many students running through programs that it's just perhaps don't get a chance to meet their students. So, you know, we often say to students that it's it's a great place to come because you'll get to know your professors. But I think the opposite is also true that us getting to know our students well is a really nice perk. For sure. Right on. And I, I'm sure a lot of profs would say have kind of similar similar stories and, and points as well. All right, so uh, just being cognizant of time, does anybody out there on the line have any further questions for um, either Dr. Lukeman, Jenna, or Victoria? Give you another few seconds to type a question if you have it, or or feel free um, to type in RH if you'd rather ask your question verbally. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, looks like that's all we have for you folks today. So again, if you have further questions, um, both Victoria and Jenna and Dr. Lukeman are all happy to to answer them for you. And of course, if you'd like to meet with an enrollment advisor, if you have any questions whatsoever about the upcoming year, we know um, it's a bit of a difficult time right now. So please feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your your Thursday, whatever time of day it is for you, wherever you're tuning in from and hope to see you very soon. And thank you to all of our, our webinar participants. Bye-bye, thanks everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye.